All right, welcome to R tips number 20, and we're going to be learning how to write SQL from R. And the first time I learned about this, this is mind blowing to me because we can actually use R to write SQL for us. So we don't need to memorize all the SQL commands. It's really cool. So we're going to make some SQL that looks like this uh, right from R. We're not going to write any SQL. It's going to be converted into this and we're going to do some formatting on it and, and such. Um, and we're going to show you how you can run SQL on your database using R without writing any SQL. OK, so to get started here. What you need to do is you need to sign up for the R tips that gets you access to the code base. So there's a link in the comments to sign up for the R tips newsletter. Once you get the access to the code, you're going to do a get pull. I'm clicking the pull button. I'm already up to date. What that's going to do is going to download all of our R tips and uh, we're going to be working out of R tip number 20 this week. So click into write SQL from R, click open up this write SQL from R file. It will open this up. All right, once you have that open, we are good to go. So I'm going to open my outlines. So you can follow along. And uh, the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to load in some libraries. So we're going to be using DBI to connect to databases. We're going to use the R SQLite package, which is the database that we're going to be specifically working on, which is a connector to SQLite. And then we're also going to load in the, the Tidyverse library. And that gives us access to this package called dbplyr, which allows us to write dplyr code that gets converted into SQL code. So let's check this out. First thing we need to do, we need to connect to our database. So we're going to use the DBI package to create a connection object. We're going to uh, connect to a database that I provided to you called mpg.sqlite. We're going to connect to that using this string here, and it makes a connection object. And you can see the path that it's connected to. Yours will look a little different um, because the file will be located on your computer. Next, we'll use a DBI package to list any tables that are in that connection object. I can see there's only one table, and that is MPG. So I'm going to be accessing that table. So we're going to move on to section two now, write SQL using R. And before we get started here, we're going to be doing some data wrangling. If you've never done data wrangling with the plier before, I covered this in depth in DS4B 101-R. It's my course. Uh, in weeks two and three, you learn data wrangling with dplyr. The trick here that we're going to use is that dplyr code that we write. It gets converted to SQL. Um, also, once we do some SQL wrangling, I'll touch base on Learning Labs Pro. It's a new type of product that we have for continuing to learn data, data science on the go. Um, you get new uh, labs every, every couple of weeks. And we have a three-part series on SQL for data science. It's really good. It shows you how to do this in much more depth for time series, for doing all sorts of different things. Um, so let's just talk about the connection object. That connection is kind of our link to this database here. So if I do tibble con mpg, this mpg is the tip table that I'm connecting to. And what I'm doing is I'm actually uh, creating a view of it on my R computer. So I haven't actually, I'm still not connected up to the data in terms of pulling it into R. Uh, this is actually just a view of that data as it lives in the SQLite database. Okay, so that's an important concept to understand. So all of this code though, I'm able to kind of um, do these data operations like group by from dplyr, a summarize, and what we're going to do is we're going to summarize the displacement, the city, and the highway mileage. And we're going to take the mean and median of each of these columns. And we're actually going to run this code on the SQLite database to, to leverage the SQLite, which is a super powerful, fast uh, framework for doing data manipulations using SQL. Uh, and that's the, the advantage is it can often work a lot faster than an R. So we're going to run this code here. And what we what we can do is take a look at what it returns and note note that this is still just a late what's called a lazy query. It's SQL light. Um, it's just a view of the data, but we've actually done the data manipulations on the database. And this is the view that get, of that data that gets returned. So it doesn't know how many columns it is yet. It does. It just knows it's or how many rows. It just knows it's eight columns. And this is what our data is going to look like. So this is really cool. Um, so I've made this connection. Uh, what we can do is actually convert this connection set of strings 
um, which returns this view of data, and we can show the SQL query. So I'm going to run this line 33, and we can get the SQL out of it. So this is cool. This is what that, um, is being translated. Um, this code right here is being translated into this SQL query. It's then being run on this database, and we can then collect the data, which is what we'll do next. So um, we've now figured out how to create SQL code from R. Next, what you probably want to do is be able to return the data into R. So we use this function called collect. And the only thing that we need to do is we just create this connection string. So we just uh, run that. And then now you see it's a tibble of 15 by 8. It's got all the different manufacturers, the counts of how many cars, the displacement mean, median, city mean median highway fuel mileage mean and median and it's got that all summarized for you so you can do this on any database and it's awesome um, the last thing i want to do is okay one of the cool things that you can do here with this connection object is that show query um, so that returns this printed output we can use this thing this function called capture output to actually capture the output and we can do a little text manipulation on it so i'm going to take uh, the, the string components from two all the way to the end of the string. So that's what this next line of code does here. And um, I'm just grabbing out these three items. And then I'm going to do a replace all to replace these back ticks. And um, I'm going to do a string collapse here too to collapse these into one line. And now I've got the SQL. If I wanted to run this on my database in, say, another program, I can just copy this right here, the SQL string, and paste it into like my SQL light dashboard or something like that. So very cool. Um, you can now uh, get the SQL as text. Uh, real quick, I, I do want to do a shout out. Um, uh, Emily Ryder has a post that I'll uh, put into the links here in the final um, code. Uh, she did an awesome tutorial. It's one of the things that I use to create this. And then also, um, I have Learning Labs Pro. If you really want to go in depth into doing more of these aggregations and, and work with time series on SQL, uh, I have that SQL for Data Science series in Learning Labs Pro. So check that out. If you like this video, don't forget to sign up for the Tuesday Free R Tips newsletter. You can just click this uh, link here and it'll send you here. Put your email address in, and every Tuesday you'll get these videos, you'll get the code and you'll get the tutorial right in your inbox.